deadly coronavirus. Now, a short time ago, the World Health Organization declared the outbreak an international public health emergency. The World Health Organization has now confirmed what many epidemiologists have been saying for weeks. The coronavirus is a pandemic. The World Health Organization today declared the coronavirus a global pandemic. In early 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic changed everything in the world. Day by day, it spread like wildfire and quickly it became the world's biggest killer. It was a surreal situation and all of our lives changed. Sports leagues across the world shut down, we couldn't go anywhere, and it was just a situation that we never thought we'd find ourselves in. We were all locked down at home with a ton of time on our hands. Thankfully, the one constant, hell or high water, was professional wrestling. Wrestling didn't go away. Wrestling gave you an escape for X amount of hours a week, and you could take your mind off things, sit back, relax, and watch the car crash you love. When COVID hit, we were on the road to WrestleMania 36 in Tampa, and we were in for a ton of fun. Edge was supposed to have his first singles match in almost a decade, John Cena and The Fiend were set to clash, and Drew McIntyre was on the road to redemption and his first WWE Championship. And then this happened. Breaking news, WrestleMania 36 will not happen here in Tampa. The WWE canceling it just hours ago. It was announced WrestleMania would no longer take place in front of thousands of fans in Tampa, and WWE moved it to a close set location. It would still be coming to us, but no one would be in the building, and it would be a two-day event. This was where the COVID situation was so scary, so unruly, that there could be no one other than the competitors in the building. The PC era was a constant reminder of how things were in the world. And unfortunately, they only got worse. At points, there was even talk of WWE having to shut down. But once WWE left the PC, they transitioned to the WWE Thunderdome. Basically, they made everything much more high production and replaced the empty chairs with LED boards where fans could sit in and enjoy the show. They wanted to bring the feel of crowds back to wrestling and the entire tenure of the Thunderdome had a lot of hits, but it had a lot of misses as well. So sit back, relax, and let's digest the last 60 months of WWE in the pandemic era. The pandemic era was a unforeseen circumstance. While it was bad for the world, for wrestling, it led so many people to excel in different aspects of professional wrestling. Let's take a look at some of the MVPs of the pandemic era before we get to the really bad stuff. Acknowledge me. When WWE transitioned to the PC, Roman Reigns took a step back to take care of his family and he was gone from the WWE. He didn't have his Mania match with Goldberg and the question was, when would he come back? This question was answered with a bang at the end of SummerSlam 2020. Roman Reigns returned and laid out Braun Strowman and The Fiend. The guy was jacked as hell, veneers were in, full beard and new attitude. He was back and now he had Paul Heyman by his side and little did we know that this was the beginning of an amazing time for Roman Reigns. A week after returning, he aligned with Paul Heyman and became the Universal Champion. To say the least, him winning the title saved that title. It had been marred by part-timers, injuries, and unfortunate events, but ever since he won it, it feels like a legit world title. From here, Reigns engaged in a family-focused feud with his cousin Jey Uso. Roman wanted Jey to acknowledge him as the head of the table. The tribal chief was born and it was the greatest thing I've seen in a long time. Jay and Roman had an amazing match at Hell in a Cell which was executed perfectly. It played with our emotions, it was character oriented and the use of verbal psychology was amazing. It was a match that only would have worked without a crowd. From here, Roman basically turned Jay into a star and anyone who fought Roman or was in his presence benefited off him. He had amazing matches with guys like Drew McIntyre, Kevin Owens, and Daniel Bryan. Every time he was on our screens, it felt huge and it left you desiring more for the next time you saw him. It's hard to believe, but without the pandemic, there is no tribal chief. WWE having no crowds gave them the flexibility to tweak Roman's character and it was an amazing win for them. This character was what we wanted for the longest time, a reset a new attitude and a new layer to his character. Ever since coming back, Roman Reigns has been untouchable. He may have debuted in 2012, but SummerSlam of 2020 is simply where Roman Reigns arrived. Welcome to Friday Night SmackDown 
Alongside Roman Reigns killing it as the tribal chief, we had SmackDown as a whole, which felt so rejuvenated ever since the draft. Guys like Sami Zayn excelled during this time. Sami was at his most entertaining after he came back. He felt like he finally had a character for the first time in his career, to the point where WWE even managed to get Logan Paul on the show. Then there was a guy like Big E, who got the chance to shine on his own after being drafted apart from the New Day. Apollo Crews finally had a character opposed to the guy who just comes out, does some flips and leaves, and Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks, and Bayley solidified themselves as some of the best women's talents in the entire world. Not just that, but we got some amazing matches on the show too. Daniel Bryan vs Roman Reigns was amazing, AJ Styles vs Daniel Bryan in the PC, Kevin Owens vs Sami Zayn, the list goes on and on. The show felt like it had new life in it, and I think if there was a crowd, it would have been seen as much more of a positive than we see it as now. SmackDown was just enjoyable from top to bottom. No, you're the problem, thought! The Hurt Business, man. Why did WWE split this team up? I don't understand. This team's chemistry was amazing. They felt like a cohesive unit. When MVP returned at the 2020 Royal Rumble, it didn't seem like it would be much, but man, were we ever wrong. The guy transitioned to a managerial role and sought out his pick, the almighty Bobby Lashley. This was his guy, but he needed more than just one guy to surround him, and that's where Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander came into play. He rescued both these guys' career out of mediocrity and presented them as stars, and they even won the tag team titles. The group just felt like a natural born fit. They were the most entertaining part of Raw for the longest time. You'd tune in and you'd want to see what havoc these four would create. Sure, the tag team titles were nice, but what was even more amazing was Bobby Lashley finally becoming the WWE Champion. One of the best physical specimens to ever enter a WWE ring finally got his moment. Unfortunately, it was in front of a bunch of screens, but the journey had come full circle. Lashley was a top tier star, and it was MVP's tutelage that brought him to the summit of WWE. Lashley, once he won, was presented very well too. A lot of the time, these guys win and they're made to look like dorks, but Lashley was anything from it. He was displayed as a dominant champion who would take no prisoners and wasn't a wimp. It was great to see him finally achieve this height, but there's one thing we're still waiting for. I also got to touch quickly on how well he performed as the United States Champion. When he was holding the title for the time he did, the title felt like it mattered, and it was one of the best US title runs I've seen in a very long time. I knew would be like fighting my own dad, mate. One of the bright spots at the beginning of 2020 was the rise of Drew McIntyre. He won the 2020 Royal Rumble, and it was his time to shine. He was finally going to get his world title match after 19 long years and an amazing journey back to WWE. After he was supposed to be the chosen one, like a failed prospect, he reinvented himself and he was back to prove that he wasn't a lost cause. His opponent was Brock Lesnar. He won the title, but it was in front of an arena full of empty chairs. On the bright side, WWE solidified Drew McIntyre as a top tier star and one of the biggest in their company. It was time for someone to step up and Drew did just that. From WrestleMania onwards, Raw was the Drew McIntyre show. He had amazing feuds with guys like Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, and Bobby Lashley. Even though a portion of the audience seems to be pretty tired of Drew McIntyre right now, you cannot dispute on the mic, in the ring, he took the ball and he ran with it. We had some crazy matches like the ones I'm going to pop up on the screen right now. And it was just amazing. He did such a good job. Love him or hate him. The pandemic era without Drew McIntyre simply wouldn't have been the same. Spear, 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 spear. Before WWE moved to the PC, we got one of the greatest wrestling returns ever. At Royal Rumble 2020, Edge made his return to the WWE after nine years and being told he would never wrestle again. The roof blew off the arena when they heard the You Think You Know Me. Edge was back and the wrestling world rejoiced. His first task at hand was a heated feud with his longtime rival, Randy Orton. Character oriented, personal, and emotionally driven. The culmination was a last man standing match at Empty Mania 1. Edge dispatched of Orton, and sure he could have sat at home and waited for crowds to return, but he didn't. He came back and we felt his hunger and drive. Every promo he cut, you could feel him making a heart to heart connection with you. He had gotten back everything he wanted. Wrestling was back in his life, and at Backlash, he wanted Randy Orton once again. 
This time, not in a last man standing match, but a straight up wrestling match. Simply labeled the greatest wrestling match ever. Edge and Randy Orton, for 40 some odd minutes, paid the best tribute to wrestling that they could. They hit rock bottoms, pedigrees, chain wrestling, they were pulling out all the stops, and somehow Edge performed better in the ring than he did 10 years prior. It was simply amazing. Then he won the 2021 Royal Rumble after starting it at number one, and week in, week out, Edge was there. Sure, you could label him as a part-timer, but he gave us so much during the Thunderdome MPC era. He gave you feuds to sink your teeth into, shocking returns, and spectacular matches. The value Edge brings to professional wrestling was proven even more this past year and a bit. This dude truly loves the business, and we gotta enjoy him for the time we have him. It's stupid! Stupid, 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 stupid. I already touched on Randy Orton's amazing feud with Edge, but Randy Orton going into Legend Killer 2.0 mode was amazing. Week in, week out, this dude did anything to hunt down legends, including at one point, he turned into a janitor for some reason, and he needed night vision goggles, which I still don't understand. But we saw Randy Orton return to the vicious Randy Orton we'd seen in years past, and it felt so great. Like many people in this video, Randy Orton took the pandemic era to focus on character oriented work and it resonated so well on WWE TV. During this time came his 14th world title reign, although it was brief, it was well deserved and then he continued to excel at the character side of things with his budding partnership with Riddle. What I do see is a broken down old man named Mark Galloway. One of the upsides to having no fans in attendance was WWE had a lot of room to work with and this lended in their favor for cinematic matches. WWE used a combination of cinematic storytelling and production to give us some amazing matches like the Boneyard match. This match was a spectacle from top to bottom and was extremely well received by fans. It was enjoyable and it did a great job at drawing you into the match, but at the same time, the theatrics made up for Undertaker's inability in the ring. There's no way that Undertaker would have been able to deliver a better match in front of fans than he did in the Boneyard match. Then we had the Money in the Bank match which was fought in WWE headquarters. They hung both the Money in the Bank contracts up at the top and it was simply a race to the top. And it brought a fresh feel to the match and obviously we wouldn't have seen something like this if the pandemic never happened. Another amazing match was the Firefly Funhouse match which was the perfect retrospective on John Cena and Bray Wyatt's career. The match was so much fun to watch and a production masterclass. It was so refreshing to see different types of matches come to us during the pandemic era. Obviously, none of this would have happened if this wasn't in place. So it's kind of cool that in a couple years, we're going to be able to look back at these matches because if WWE just stayed the way they did, these would have never happened. I'm also going to lump in with the cinematic matches, the normal matches. We got so many amazing matches that we were lucky to see, like Jeff Hardy versus AJ Styles and Sami Zayn in a triple threat ladder match for the IC title. Roman Reigns vs Jey Uso, Randy vs Edge, Roman vs KO, Roman vs Drew McIntyre, the list goes on and on. The matches were simply amazing. I'm I, Sasha Banks, yes. this is Bailey. Yes. she's the role model, yes. I'm the leader. Bailey and Sasha Banks every single week were simply everything sports entertainment should be. They were great in the ring, they made you care, and above all else, they were entertaining. They helped carry the PC era by playing their Mean Girls character to a T. Bailey's 380 day reign was excellent and at one point, Sasha Banks and Bailey had all the main roster women's titles between the two. And not only that, but they made the women's tag titles feel important. It was also well executed and interwoven in their brilliance were small little hints for the audience to pick up on as their eventual turn on one another was coming very soon. The turn was executed very well and their match delivered too. It's crazy to think that when Bailey was doing this, we didn't know she was capable of this. She truly solidified herself as one of the best women's performers during the pandemic era. Afterwards, Sasha finally got to carry a women's championship for an extended period of time and successfully have defenses because we know Sasha always loses on her first defense, which sucks. She did eventually lose the title to Bianca Belair, but she was a phenomenal performer during this time. Without these two, the women's division would have been simply unwatchable especially because Becky Lynch had left because she had a child on the way. When Asuka was awarded the women's championship after Becky Lynch announced her pregnancy, she took it and she ran with it. Alongside Bailey and Sasha Banks, she was consistently entertaining. 
Without Asuka, we don't have some of the amazing matches we got between the combination of herself, Bailey, and Sasha Banks. What Asuka lacked, Bailey and Sasha helped her make up for. Her mannerisms, in-ring skill, and overall just amazing ability made her even more vital during this time, and she was amazing to watch. <laughs> Before WWE moved to the PC and Thunderdome, Seth Rollins had changed his character into the Monday Night Messiah. It was time for a heel turn to freshen things up, and in the pandemic era, we saw him go to new lows. He got everyone invested in his character and say what you want about the Mysterio feud, but he did a great job at selling his character to the audience. The slow cadence in the promos to the vicious nature of his in-ring work, it all went together so well. He was simply amazing during this time. Real quick, I want to touch on the amazing two-night WrestleMania we got in 2021. It felt so nice to have fans back and the whole event, top to bottom, was very enjoyable. Also, huge shout out to NXT as they very much went through the same struggle as the main roster, but very much so, they felt separate from the Thunderdome and PC era. You suck! Where do I even start when I need to talk about the bad? We had Braun Strowman's choo-choo train, Zombies took over the Thunderdome, and Reginald was the biggest simp I've ever seen in my life. Then we had Retribution, the thrift shop version of the Nexus, with names like Slapjack, T-Bar, and Reckoning. Man, they were really intimidating with those masks. Then we had Voodoo Alexa Bliss gain superpowers and give Randy Orton third degree burns, which he somehow recovered from in a week. We had Ric Flair give Lacey Evans all the Ric Flair drip she could handle. And then Raw as a whole became the biggest parody of itself during this time. All we got were repeat matches, meaningless stories, Alexa Bliss turned into a 10 year old and the whole show just spiraled downwards even more. It was already a stretch having to sit through three hours of this, but it became the same recurring matches, feuds, and scenarios. Y'all remember when Lana went through tables like 10 straight weeks or something like that? That was just brutal to watch. The Mysterios and Seth Rollins feuded for what felt like forever. We had Seth Rollins try to make us believe that he actually took out another dude's eye. We had a swamp fight. We had Adnan, Miz and Morrison thought they were feuding with a legit bunny, Raw Underground was a thing that happened. It's like for every one good storyline, we'd have three unappealing and boring stories. At times, it felt like a huge drag to watch wrestling, but in the end, it was still there. And then the biggest fatality to happen, the splitting of the Hurt Business. Let's move on to some even worse things before we give out some awards. In such a horrific time during the middle of a pandemic, the worst thing that can happen to you is you losing your job. What's even worse is being fired by a company who despite a pandemic, put up some of the best financial numbers they ever did. We had not one, but two different Black Wednesdays where so many amazingly talented people were released from WWE. People like Aleister Black, The Iconics, Buddy Murphy, amongst so many others. I feel for these guys, man, what more can I say? Simply for the fact that WWE just wanted to get rid of them. They wanted to clean the cupboard. A guy like Buddy Murphy looked like he was on his way to becoming something on SmackDown at one point, but it was all for naught. Man, it's just a depressing time and a real stain for wrestling in general. I know all these amazingly talented people will land on their feet and will find their way back, but at such an uncertain time, you can't defend any of this. This was simply uncalled for and just an ugly mark for WWE, and it came at a horrible time. Let's give out some awards, because with this time wrapping up, it's important to give everyone their due and see who shined where. I'm going to try to be as objective as I can, but I'm one guy, everyone's opinions are going to be different. So let's get right into it, and let me know your winners down below in the comments. For best male performer, that one has to go to Roman Reigns. His mannerisms, mic, and character work were simply phenomenal ever since he came back. Drew McIntyre was really close for me, and while Drew McIntyre did carry Raw, I feel like Roman was just a cut above. He is the complete package, and I feel like this pandemic era was a really good reset of his character. Best female performer. When I think of female performers during the Thunderdome era, my mind immediately turns to SmackDown and Sasha Banks. Simply put, she didn't have a single bad match, she was entertaining week in, week out, and she was involved in the most compelling women's stories in WWE. So this one belongs to her, although Bailey, Asuka, and Bianca 
do deserve honorable mentions. Best moment during the pandemic era, this one was tough. We had so many amazing moments from Becky Lynch announcing her pregnancy, Roman Reigns returning, and Drew winning his first title. But I think if we're looking at sheer moments, then it's gotta go to The Undertaker's send off. Whether that's actually it for him, I highly doubt it. But if you're looking at it for significance, the best character in wrestling history leaving the business is as big as it gets. Most underrated goes to Sheamus. Sheamus had great feuds with guys like Jeff Hardy and Drew McIntyre, and during those feuds, it felt like he had a new edge to him. He felt rejuvenated and he really got you invested in the story. His matches were amazing too. I think of some amazing matches between him, Drew McIntyre, Matt Riddle, and even Jeff Hardy. The best storyline goes to Jey Uso and Roman Reigns. A character driven story which pulled on your heartstrings and got you invested in the two characters. What more can I say? It was simply sports entertainment done perfectly. The execution was brilliant. Best cinematic match goes to the Boneyard match. Just something new that's going to be looked at years from now very fondly. You'll be in whatever year, you'll go back to this match and you're going to enjoy it. And if that's it for The Undertaker, what a way to go out with such a well received match. Most improved, I'm going to give this one to Bobby Lashley. His career really took off once he aligned himself with MVP and now he feels like an even bigger star in WWE. Sami Zayn and Apollo Crews were also in the conversation, but you can't deny how amazing Bobby Lashley is. Best Newcomer For this one, we were lucky to see some amazing people like Rhea Ripley, Keith Lee, and Matt Riddle. But I think it's gotta go to Bianca Belair. She was amazing in the ring and I think WWE did a great job of building another woman star. She really proved that she is that good and deserves to be where she is. For Best Match, I don't think I can give that one out. There were so many top tier matches and it's really hard to choose just one so i'm gonna let you guys debate that one in the comments best tag team in my opinion were the golden role models as i mentioned consistently entertaining their feud was amazing and their matches were spectacular best pay-per-view goes to wrestlemania 37. both nights were enjoyable even though it wasn't in the pc or thunderdome it still falls under the scope of the pandemic era as they ended up going back to the Thunderdome after WrestleMania 37. Best character goes to the Tribal Chief. The whole aura around him was amazing from top to bottom. I feel like this is exactly what we've been waiting for ever since Roman Reigns was pushed so hard in 2015. SmackDown became Roman Reigns and he became WWE. Best overall competitor, so basically the MVP of the Thunderdome and PC era combined, goes to Hasbullah. Nah, I'm just kidding. It goes to Roman Reigns once again. You know the drill. You know how good he was. Without him, we don't have these compelling and character-oriented stories. He reset everything about himself, and he won over even the biggest Roman Reigns haters. Real quick, if I forgot to mention someone, apologies for that. We can't get into every little feud, storyline, and superstar, because we're going to be here forever. 16 months is a long time to cover in a video. Man, what a time this was. Whether you loved it or you hated it, every week you had wrestling to watch. You had something to admire or criticize on your own accord, and for that, be thankful. Wrestling was so helpful during this period, and it helped a ton of us get through a terrible time. If you really think about it, this pandemic era added a lot to wrestling history. Like, we always talk about moments from wrestling past, well, we had cinematic matches, concepts we probably won't see again, and it gave WWE the flexibility to provide us different layers to sports entertainment. You can say whatever you want about the product, but one thing you cannot deny, not just for the WWE, but wrestling in general, was it was there for you in a horrible, unpredictable, and scary time. And for that, we should be forever grateful. So thank you to every competitor who stepped in the ring. Thank you to every person who helped put together a show, anyone who made a graphic, anyone who wrote the show, because without you guys, it simply wouldn't have been possible. Fans are coming back and normality is returning. And for that, you can't be anything but excited. July 16th will be a new beginning for WWE. Screaming fans are going to be back and wrestling will once again feel as it should. And to this pandemic era, goodbye.